Okay, time to edit this week's video. Just need to pull out the files and... Just need to pull up the files and... Okay, you know what? Maybe, maybe they're in a different place. Maybe I just need to look somewhere else and I will find them. Then where else have I sent them in? There is nothing else here. Hello there, welcome to another Toker, Ramblings. Next three weeks are going to be sort of a trilogy of, of sorts. We'll be looking at a few eras of the Garo franchise. Now, Garo is is, mo is one of the more unique Tokus in that, unlike a lot of the um, other Tokus, Tokus of our time, this one is more aimed towards an adult audience instead of the... Um, younger crowds that they are generally in for and is the child of Keita Ama Mia, a a toy alumni who worked on numerous numerous toy token productions ranging from from Kamarina Black and its sequel RX, Children's Sentai Jetman, and a few metal heroes including Wind Spectre and and has even more or less done some artistry for games like Shin Megami Tensei 4, Clock Tower 3 and on on a Mush. Musha 2. To end in the mid-2000s bankroll, this as he realized there really wasn't much in terms of Toku for adults. Now, that's not to say that Toku is generally for children. It's more of an all-ages thing. Garo is very much a series that is aimed at more adult content. He's in, you know, that takes courage and I can say it really worked out. Here. I can say that more or less it by all accounts plays things fairly safely. So backstory and basic synopsis is that more or less since the dawn of man time, hum humans' negative emotions have influenced a place known as the Makai. Well, a home of demonic spirits known as horrors, who become capable of breaking into our world when gateways are overflowing with evil energy known as Inga in order to feed on humans. And this is not like in a um, spiritual f thing like actually just eats them. And takes their place. Yeah, this shows it's not screwing over. But help you, man. The is not lost. A group of knights and priests known as the Makai Or, they are our task of fighting the horrors and protecting humanity from its da danger. Our story focuses on the titular hero of the name, Florgaro Kogus Jima, the creme de la cre and primo Makai knight, because you know. Gold means, means supreme. During a, what should have been routine hunting of a whore, Ryokoga runs into a struggling artist by the name of Rumitsu. It's a key and ends up more, less splashing her with, with horror blood. Unfortunately, getting splashed with horror blood is essentially a death sentence. You are now basically a horror magnet and basically will only survive for about 100 days and you will suffer a very painful death. Protocol says that she has to die, but Kogamola sees her as a good way to attract horrors through her, and he sort of sees, sees her, his mom, in her. Yeah, that's our hero. Lying to more or less an innocent the bystander he inadvertently dragged into the conflict. And the thing is, that is technically the basics. The Garo's plot is more episodic in its nature. Sure, there are small inklings of the plot itched out here and there for its for its 25 sub run, but it's mostly focused on the on the singular horror threats that face, with the main threat coming up in the last 25 episodes. It's sort of like like if Wizard was like half the epi episodes and Alongside looking pretty more or less actually at characters I actually enjoy, which leads us to Koga. I, besides the fact that he lies and it does the annoying trope I don't like of more or less the the third act breakup because more or less person lied and they don't like I do you know, I like Koga. the first episode does well in establishing what he is the like. They're stoic, seer. Oh yes, and determined to more or less get his job. Job done, but also a fairly lonely. So, 
it's all with no one. And around stands his, his snarky ring Zaraba and dutiful but Butler Gonza. Gonza since his parents' death years ago. Go and his relationship with Kaoru initially kind of has this um Beauty and the Beast sort of aspect of basically he kidnaps her and forces her to live at his place. Place, but he gets a very the arc about him is for this show is basically coming out of his shell and learning to almost accept the people around him to be a kind of to treat the others around him with more kindness instead of just giving them the cold shoulder because of his his status as Gar. Garo, and I think the chemistry that more or less they share, despite their um, tumultuous start, is one of the, the better sex about the show. Oh. And speaking of that second part in the relationship, Garo uh, is basically a dance mistress. She spends a good chunk of her, t her time more or less being being preyed on by, by horrors, caught or lay in the grass of the on Sporter plan. Um, I guess if more or less there is something that more or less you less light way at the show with, just to be nitpicky, is that it plays a lot of a lot of certain tropes very straight in terms of Tokyo. Like in certain aspects, if you've seen a story like this before, you're gonna guess certain twists. Where I'm like, you know, the seemingly good natured psychiatrist turns out to be the big bad, or the supposed. Those mentors turn out to also be evil too, but it's done well enough that I don't don't hate it. And you know, for everything she puts up with, she's surprisingly good natured most of the time. Never more or less breaking except until you know the big lie. Lie, but that is really really good. I also like that she is sort of this, you know, you know, vessel for us to view this crazy world world and she is the normal to this cuckoo world and more or less also serves as sort of this this link to human the I think that works really well for her. And seeing as how this is a Tokusatsu when he post nineties world, we get our secondary night in the form of Ray. Ray and yeah he sort of fits in a similar vein of more or less secondary dairy writers. Kind of their they're opposite, a more jovial guy compared to God Charisma. Medic always willing to smile. Smile, but they're also more or less kind of have a similarity in that they both have kind of tragic deaths for father. Figures at the hands of an evil knight. Though, though in Ray's case, okay, this is like the one major story hiccup I have with this whole. I'm not fond of, I, he never seems to more or less ask anyone what is going on or even ask Koga directly more, less what were you doing more, less on this day, time, and even if he didn't trust him, he could have asked literally any other, like I ordered more or less what was going on at the time with Gar would have realized that Koga, Koga or more or less the Garos didn't have anything to do with, so then that makes him spend most of the initial portion of the, of the story. Story being antagonistic. That's sort of an issue with the story at times. It more or less does those forced drama tropes, like again, the forced breakup, the poor communication. Communication, but more or less deals with it in that more or less the characters real lives or fix the mistakes that they have done to be better people. That's the thing. Here. Ever like like there's sort of like you feel Ray still kind of has this human aspect in that more or less he's still likely in grief. His attitude is just likely a coping mechanism for him. Less to hide the rage he likely hides behind his quote unquote a good guy person. The only thing that really works. He's probably my favorite character in the, in the series with his actor Ray Fujio giving a wide performance of charisma and coolness at the same time and owning every scene. He's in. Um, outside of the main three, there are the primary side characters in the form of Zarba, the kind of wisecracking smart ass who's who's assists Koga in detecting horror energy, and 
Gonzo the Butler, there's really not much to, to him as a character at this point. Point. Um, more from the Makai Order, we get Ginnamon and Javi. Um, unfortunately, they're not really used to their fullest ability as they're killed not long after they're introduced, which is especially disappointing for Javi. Yeah, because I really liked her base introduction. It's an episode in which she kind of hung around a little more, sort of like the action girl took through sort of non-action girl. girl. But I like their kind of like connection to Kogo's past. And, you know, that's something I really like. That's, you know, you know, again, that was a comparison. We get to know these people, you know. It's not just base personality and... Just, ooh, look at pretty fight scenes. They're so pretty. It ignores the fact that their characters are not that deep. Um, then we get to the villains, as mentioned, the um, previously mentioned um, evil psychiatrist who turns out to be Barago. We go, um, never weak point to Mollus, I think. More a nitpick, but the villains are not the most interesting. That's just kind of an issue of Mole. What's Garo deciding to put most of its endgame in its last few episodes and not really giving time to the vil villains. He's your standard evil both fallen knight willing to sacrifice anything for the ultimate power in this case, the mother of all horrors, the Sai. Saya, which I'll summon less tying in with less powers beginning. You would ends up biting him in the ass. Also get used to that. It's gonna come up a lot in these shows. Shelves just people and walls playing with the stuff outside their path. Um, we get a little more from the for the Eastern Watchdogs and their butler Kodama because we see them a lot more throughout the show. So even if their personalities and characters are flat to say the least, I mean I like the designs and I think most of the horror designs in the show are pretty soft. Solid, but mostly the thing eh, the thing with the villains is that more or less they look cool, but their personalities are not the greatest or more or less fairly developed. And that also goes for Messiah, just evil and carn. Then, last reminder hey, this is a show for only adults. Look, we're showing more bare skin than you can imagine. Imagine, remember this from your childhood? We're taking this to its extreme. Um, but, um, the big thing that I think Wallace really helps for the positives is that this series is a treat for the eyes. I think, eh, with very few exceptions, which the very few exceptions are just the really mid 2000s CGI that doesn't look too particularly good. Uh, it's used sparingly, so it's not noticeable, but like the main suits look phenomenal. I like the gold and black contrast for the Gara suit, it, it gives off this regal. This is more or less the end-all, be-all of knights. Knights with the suit and Ray suit also more or less. This works really well. Um, there's a lot, I mean a lot about a suit fighting, which more or less gives some really great choreo in those fights. And it's like, you know, Garo feels special, you know? He's only usable for like 60 seconds, and more or less he's very quick and more or less gets what he needs done, done. Done. It's not like... Say, you know, we need two more now to be able to see. Chance, Koga, and Ray are formidable fighters, even out of suit. And I think then less is really cool. Cool. Um, if there's a nitpick I can say about fights, um, I think the last fight might go on for a little bit too long and more or less gets a little ridiculous for us. For its sake, it takes place on a giant. We only kind of just comes after the big climax fight, so it just feels like it feels like a post-final boss. Boss, it just kind of goes on for a little too long. Long. It's not the worst thing ever, but it just kind of stalls out. But but outside of that, everything about this show is just a treat for the uh, I should know. Again, that fight choreography, the the kind of gothic, thick atmosphere to show has going for it. It's very much a horror and folly to an extent with each creature having its own unique design.
Uh, I'm from like evil clowns, weird fish people, people, and even some human designs, I think, kind of. The but more also kind of the lace interesting in the mall, I think more. Let's do show more or less these creatures as legitimate threats. Um, I think the music also sort of helps to to lean into those more horror elements that the series is clearly trying to evoke. I like how the first theme is more or less this kind of instrumental until build up up to, up to what we do get as this as the actual opening for this year series, which is this nice hard rock in. And from two guard, that's just good blood, blood pump, and it just really gets you going. Oh, and I'm all else, it's one of those openings I just don't skip whatsoever when I'm all else watch this show. Uh, what else? More stuff. Oh, um, episodes. Um, episodes I really like. That that's gonna be. Um, I like more or less the episode where Koga is challenged by. I think ep episode twenty where he more. Let's face up against a whole bunch of gunmen whores. It's easily like the best action scene in the entire entire show, hands down. No, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. About it. Um. Um. Sixteen, the more relaxed game of chess that comes with a bit of levity before we get more into Garo's end game. And that happens not long after this. This um. Game show, game show, yeah, that's a big one, too. God, yeah. Yep, I can keep naming off episodes, but, you know, this is one of those tokus that I think is still available in the West. I know a DVD release happened for it, so if you haven't seen it, I would just recommend going and seeing it. It, it might not, quote-unquote, break ground story or character. Rise, but, you know, it's just something I more or less enjoy. It is just a visual treat, and it's nice to more or less have a much more adult kind of show should I condone these kinds of th things without being concerned about selling merchandise and then we have a um few additional pieces of what I more or less consider sort of like the um series one of Gar Garo so first up is more or less the kind of epilogue two-parter special special that aired a few months after the, f the season and Demon Beast of White Night, which sees Koga more or less reviving one of the more, one of the more, one of the um, wasted potentials from season one. Ja, yeah, because she's not fully dead. Her spirit's stuck in the spirit. Welcome to my kind piece known as Miki. So, Koga tra travels with the Tagalong cha child Ren to more That's the rescue Javi, while at the same time a new horror friend is making itself known and and threatening the world. So. This was kind of like an epilogue and more or less like potentially the last bit of Garo material since the show did not do particularly well upon initial airing. So as like kind of this supposed final bit of Garo stuff, you know, I think it's pretty good. But y you can sort of tell where the first and second parts begin if you more or less watch it together as a whole movie. Um... I think Legolas has the same kind of issue of more or less Messiah. Messiah that more or less he's talked up a lot, but he's not given much in terms of characterization outside of like, you know, his camaraderie with his horg. Ken which makes him unique in that more or less this is sort of a um family to the him. Um Um this Alongside that, um, Ray kind of takes more of a back scene in this, kind of, kind of being a, a more supporting role and kind of showing himself free from like the torment he's had to spend and all these years living more to so finally avenge his family. Um, this more acts sort of like you know, in the terms of Axel, sort of a cap to Koga's arc and shows how he has grown from more or less the cold, distant person to who he is by the end of it, as he is shown with his interactions with um. The new night to introduce here, Ray, who is ten kinds of different flavors of ass. All as he just just treats Koga with mistrust for no reason, reason even no more. Plus, he is technically a 
the definitive night of the faction, more or less is just willing to kill his sister. He looked to stain because. because it's a stick in them. But he just kind of is not a pleasant character and doesn't leave that much of a good taste in your mouth. Mouth for it. But, uh. Yeah, um, moments from. Um, I like. Cause, like, you can. Yeah, going back to. But like, you can see more or less how, how he, like, handles Kaoru's painting being damaged when Rin attempts to show off that he is very much caring about the person. Like, this, like, not a, it's a more understated couple, but I really do like it. Um, um, I still think the action in this is very top, no. Notch it is more. This, uh, I think the story moves at a um, good pace. I think the only issue story-wise I have is like, like the continuity issue of like you know, horror blood poisoning is such a serious thing that is hard to cure, and um, horror blood poisoning happens here, and it's easily treated. Yes, kind of cheapens the 25 episode journey we had up to this point, and um, I guess the other big issue I have with this is like the penultimate fight scene where they're more or less kind of like Endor they're fighting through some tree trees to catch up with Flay to catch up I have to stop like a what says Rever Resurrection feels fake to an extension I don't like it's the most out of place fights scene and arguably the low point in terms of action I would say between the 27 episodes we have here but you know now I think this is a Good initial synop to Gar. Gar and a nice way to end this and the initial series. But of course that was not the end because a few years later we got Garo Red Red Rock Mercriam and it's a good film. Um, I think more less it has a really solid movie length movie movie beefed up version of the show. Show that sees Koga traveling outside of his his jurisdiction to more or less help a group of Makai priests in dealing with with a with a new horror threat in the form of Car, uh, a horror that's more or less trapped with inside a um mirror. Notable amongst them is Reika, who more or less wants to beat Koga to the punch to more or less gain vengeance on Kamra for her father father's death. Now, again, this is a I think more or less it it hits all the good strengths of the series. I think it also let's get it has all the strengths of the main series. I think the action is still top notch. Koga more or less still does really well overall, and we get some more story. Need. I like that more or less here. He's kind of taking on a more mentor role for. Rick in this instant. Then seeing as how more or less, you know, you know, the father trained him as a kid. And that sort of thing. The Koga is kind of, kind of like, he is a main character, but the more focus is kind of on Rick right? because she gets the main arc of this film and going from very headstrong on ease of the action without faking them through to more, less cooling down a bit and trusting him. Trusting of others. Um, the other two priests, Akaza and Shiguto, are fine. Just um, they mostly said the purpose of the story and never in really an annoying case. I like some new technology. They sh show like the little suitcase dog that they use a few time times. That's pretty neat. Um, the I'd say Karma is a bit more interesting of a horror compared to the yes two two one. She's a lot smarter, I'd say, with what she does, like trapping the Gara armor behind um with her so it, so it can't be used against her and hypnotizing pe people, knowing Koga likely wouldn't attack. Attack um the story behind her two generals. Yes, they don't have much personality, but I like the story behind them, even if it's. Fairly standard. It, 
there. Um, that's kind of... It's a really nice one-off sword that reintroduces the world to the Golden. Night Ray possible return. Turn and, you know, it got Gara back on TV, so it did its job. Uh, anything else? Oh, yeah, the, um, Kiba Gaiden special. Um, it's there. It's... Despite more or less getting the actors back for a little bit, they didn't more or less do a full live-action thing. It's mostly animated. It's nice if you want more backstory on more. Unless Kiba as a character, or Bargo as a character. But it's not mandatory. Yeah, that was the first kind of era of Yara. Honestly, that was really, really good, good stuff. I honestly would recommend watching all of this, hands down. So, um... If you like what you saw, you know, the usual thing, like, comment, subscribe, subscribe, click the video, so more or less keep watching my stuff, and, um, enjoy the rest of your day.